Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. Today we're going to be talking about the Nikon PB4 Bellows. It was originally introduced in 1970, and it was designed for Nikon 35mm single lens reflex cameras. However, it can be used on DSLRs, such as this D7100 here, I just want to put it down so it don't tip over. And also Nikon mirrorless cameras. So let's just go over the bellows first. This was not Nikon's first bellows. In fact, there was a bellows 2, a bellows 3. I guess the bellows 1 was for the rangefinder camera. Anyway, anyway, this is a very sophisticated bellows. It has extension from 43 millimeters to 185. Okay, it has locks on everything. So let me just loosen this here and you can see how it extends. It could also, ha has movement from the back end, from the end attached to the camera. All right, so this is the maximum extension of 185 millimeters with a 50 millimeter lens mounted in the normal position it will give you magnifications from 0.83 times to 3.6 times life size. Okay, and here we are at its minimum extension. Nikon also made um, short mount lenses for this bellows, a 135 and a 100 or 105 millimeter. Those are long discontinued, but they required the bellows for focusing those short mount lenses, and they also focus to infinity. The 50 millimeter lens mounted on this will not focus to infinity, and this is just primarily used for macro photography. Okay, and everything locks down. Okay, we get our focus and the baby locks down. Same thing with the rear standard. That will lock as well. But one of the really nice things about this bellows is it has an additional rail here. Okay, and I'm going to mount this on a tripod in a little, little bit. I just want to go over a few things first. But this enables to move the entire assembly back and forth. And when you are in the macro range, you really need to do that to focus. You can't use, a, if the lens had a focus ring or even using this bellows back and forth, it's better to move the entire assembly once you lock in the magnification that you want. Okay, so now I'm going to mount the bellows onto the tripod. I think it'll be easier to see than working on that table. The bottom rail has a tripod mount and I added an Arca Swiss plate. Makes putting it on, the tri on and off the tripod much easier. So I'm just gonna secure this. Always make sure it is tight. You don't want the bellows, camera, lens assembly, all falling off. All right, so originally, like I said, this was designed for Nikon film cameras. So here I have a Nikon F2, and I'm going to mount it. And there's a little notch here. What I'll do is I'll include some still pictures um, in the video to show that in more detail than I could show in video. And we're just going to mount the camera. It mounts just like a lens would mount onto the camera. All right, so now we have our camera attached. And Nikon, when this came out, uh, the lens that they recommended was the, uh, no, this is the 24. The lens they recommended was the 50 millimeter 2.0. Uh, works better than the 50 millimeter 1.4. In fact, they don't recommend the 50 1.4 for close-ups for, for this type of, you know, for macro photography. All right, so we have the lens mount, and that's the whole assembly, right? And um, there is, let me just swing this around so you could see. There is a button here so you could swing and it locks in place. You could swing the camera to vertical and we'll take it back down to horizontal. Okay. Now, there are locking knobs at the top. On the, on the right side of the bellows, okay? So let's loosen the two top locking knobs and we can move the camera closer to the lens, all right? Let's pull it all the way back again. And we could 
move the lens further away from the camera. That, so that's your maximum extension. Let's come down to minimum extension right here. Okay, we could also mount this lens in reverse. When you mount a lens in reverse, it gives you greater magnification. Now this lens mounted the normal way will give you from 0.83 times magnification up to 3.6 times. When you mount it in reverse, it'll give you from 1.6 times to 4.4 times. So let me show you how to do that. So let's take the lens off. And I'm using here a BR2 reversing ring. All right, it screws, it's got 52 millimeter filter threads on one side, which screws into the front of any lens with a 52 millimeter filter thread. And then you just mount it. And on the other side, it has a Nikon F bayonet mount. So you just line up the dots, and there we have it. Okay? Now, you have an exposed element here. And um, let's say you wanted to use filters or a, a lens shade. Well, Nikon makes something called the BR3. Okay? And the BR3 attaches to the bayonet mount and it gives you 52 millimeter threads so you could add a filter. And not only can you add a filter, but you could add a lens shade. This is a shade for the 50 millimeter F2. Now, I think you're probably okay if you don't have a filter on there, just with the BR3, that does give you some shading and some protection. Okay. All right, so that's with a Nikon film camera mounted. So why don't we remove that? Okay. All right, let's say we want to put a Nikon DSLR. So here I have a 7100. There's an issue here. Because of the grip, I can't mount it to the bellows. Even without the battery pack, the grip extends too far. You can't mount it. So what you need to do is add some extension. So I have two extension tubes here. A PK-12, which is 14 millimeters, and a PK-11A, which is 8 millimeters. So I'm going to attach them There we go. Oh, here it is. I'm going to attach them to the camera body. They're attached to the bo uh, camera body. Now I'm going to attach the camera easily to the bellows. Of course, that adds your, to your extension, so it's going to get you a little closer, whether reversed or mounted uh, regular. Okay, and um, so that works out fine. You could still turn the camera to vertical if you choose. All right. Now, what about a mirrorless camera? All right, so let's take this off. The nice thing and the recommended, uh, my recommendation is when, when using an assembly like this, is a camera with through the lens metering. If you used a camera without a meter, a film, old film camera without a meter or a non-working meter, you're going to have to do a lot of calculations to figure out how much light you're, lo you're losing because of the extension. All right, so here I'm going to mount a Nikon Z6. I already have the F to Z adapter attached. Okay. Now, I really like using a camera that has a tilting screen with the bellows because if you're shooting at a low angle, it's so much easier and uh, it works out really good. Now one thing to keep in mind when using this bellows or probably most bellows, there's no mechanical or electronic connection between the lens and the camera body. So you must open the lens up manually to its maximum aperture, close it to focus, close it down to the aperture you want to use, and again, so there's no communication between the camera and the lens. Okay, so I want to show you something that's kind of unique to a bellows for a 35 millimeter camera. This lens has a 
shift of 10 degrees to the left, 10 degrees to the right. It also has a swing of 25 degrees to the right or 25 degrees to the left. And that is used for depth of field, extending depth of field in close-up photography. Um, it's very limited in, into how well it works. However, if you were able to mount a medium format lens, which has a much larger image circle than a 35 millimeter, you would be able to use the extremes of the movement. Okay, so we know that we get more magnification reversing the lens and also better quality. But what if we reverse mounted a wide angle lens? So here I have a 24 2.8 and I'm going to screw in the reverse mount adapter. All right, so let's mount the 24 in reverse. Okay, now with this lens mounted in reverse, we can get to 10 times magnification, right? With full extension. Okay, it's just extended all the way out. When set up like this, we can get 10 times magnification. Now we're gonna be really close to the subject. We're also, because of all this extension, our 2.8 lens, if it's wide open, is gonna give us an effect of F11. Okay, and of course we're gonna focus this assembly, the entire assembly, by moving the whole thing back and forth using this bottom rail. And then once we're ready, we tighten everything down. The quality on this isn't going to be the greatest, but you can do it. Now, what I recommend, although the 50 is a really good lens, I recommend a dedicated macro lens. And here we have the 60 millimeter 2.8. You could use a 55 2.8. These lenses, macro lenses, are designed for close-up photography, for macro photography. So they're, they're flatter field. They're going to give you better image quality, especially if you're photographing like a document, uh, something flat, because they are flat field. All right, and they work out great. Now this is a 62 millimeter thread. You can get an adapter to mount the 62 millimeter front filter thread lenses in reverse on the bellows. Now, this, this was an autofocus lens. Obviously, you can't autofocus. It has a CPU, but it doesn't matter with the bellows. Now, also, you can mount an AFS lens. This is a G lens. G lens means it doesn't have an aperture ring. We can mount it. We can focus it. Okay, moving the whole thing back and forth, but it doesn't have an aperture ring, so it's useless. Since we don't have control of the aperture, it would be, I think, at the smallest aperture, which was probably like 22 or 32. One of my subscribers had asked a question. Um, it was in f a reference to, I don't know, I think I had did something on this bellows a while back. But anyway, I got a question. Uh, what if you mounted the assembly vertically on the tripod. All right, so let's just swing this around. Okay, so I just had to raise the tripod so you could see. So, all right, now it's mounted vertically, not by turning the camera vertically on the bellows, but turning the whole assembly vertically. Now, could you use that swing rather than going left to right, going top to bottom? And the answer to that question, hang on, wrong one, is yes. And he was speaking about that in reference to product photography. Uh, I guess if you're shooting down on a vertical object, I think by either doing this, by tilting up or down, uh, maybe you can correct for depth of field, but also for uh, if the perspective is off, you know, if you're, if, it'd be kind of like if you had a view camera shooting up at a building, you would swing the lens standard to correct for that. So uh, I, I, I know very little about view cameras. I used, I think I used them twice in my life, uh, but 
So yes, you can by turning it vertically. Just make sure now that you got this whole heavy thing, a heavy assembly off to one side, just make sure it's secure. All right, let's bring this back down. And straighten this up so now that you could see it again. I think this bellows, even though it was introduced in 1970, works great with digital cameras, especially those with tilting screens. If you're shooting low, it's so much easier than having to crouch down and look through the viewfinder. Focus peaking with mirrorless cameras, as well as the ability to zoom in 100%, really makes focusing easier. Okay, so in my next video, I'm going to be talking about adapting lenses to the bellows. There's many lenses. You don't have to just use Nikon F bayonet mount lenses on this bellows. There are a ton of lenses you can use, and I'm going to talk about some of those lenses, how you adapt them. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And a few weeks ago, I also started coming out with the video on Monday as well. So Mondays and Wednesdays at 11, look for new videos. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time.